Forty years ago, the Vietnam War was ended by President Nixon, and hundreds of prisoners of war came home after years of brutal captivity. That's the key. Through their prison walls, the... they tapped letters to each other, for God bless you. you, you, and came away with lessons about what courage really is. What is it? Courage is fear that has said its prayers. Courage is not always, you know, the end of the fight. Uh, courage is a process. Everett Alvarez was the first American shot down in Vietnam. He was beaten and tortured. How long did you spend in captivity? A total of uh, eight and a half years. We had a code. It was return with honor. Our dignity, uh, our reputation, uh, our character. Uh, that, that brought us through. John Borling was locked up with him in what became known as the Hanoi Hilton. They were both tortured. We maintained that we wouldn't give them anything for free. So the thing was do the best you can, make them hurt you and hurt you bad and then bend but don't break. A lot of people only have five or six friends that they can really count on in a tough situation. But we had 300 friends that we knew would take not just death for each other but torture for each other. Torture is much harder to take than death. Those are the last known American prisoners of war. That part of the Vietnam tragedy is over. It was 1973. 590 American POWs were finally coming home. Colonel Ellis, who says they got on the plane, he was handed a big cigar and hugged a nurse. We had not seen a woman in five and a half years. Can you imagine that? I bounded up the stairs and stopped at the top. <laughs> Blow <my> kiss. <laughs> And Captain Gruders, who seemed so subdued on the flight home, soared in a dance of joy at the sight of his little brother all grown up. The son of a gun is stronger than I am. And then these wild rumors started circulating that there was going to be a dinner at the White House. Here in this tent on the back lawn of the White House, more than 1,200 people will dine with the Nixons. A giant tent was installed on the South Lawn. President Nixon invited every Vietnam POW. It remains the largest dinner ever held at the White House. Never has the White House been more proud than it is tonight because of the guests we have tonight. It was huge. Lots of celebrities. Lots of celebrities. Who did you see? Well, I sat with John Wayne at our team. And I thought, oh, man, this is it. <laughs> I'm sitting with the Duke. My hero, you know. President Nixon made us feel like we were the stars. Robert Certain spent three, three months in a North Vietnamese prison with Al Agnew. So he brought us home. He ended the war. President Nixon is, is one of our heroes. In a more serious moment, every POW met the president. You had a moment with the president. What, what did you say to him? What did he say to you? He said something very interesting. He said, um, I tried. I really tried. Did that mean he tried to get you home? He tried to get us home. There's no diminution of our uh, affection for Richard Nixon. And for us, he was the guy that uh, stuck with us. In 1973, President Nixon saluted nearly 600 American troops. They had been held as prisoners of war in Vietnam. After their release, they were treated to an unforgettable celebration. And now, 40 years later, many of those former PO POWs rather are reuniting. Former POWs from the Vietnam War gathered today for a reunion at the Richard Nixon Presidential Library in California. They spent years in North Vietnamese prisons and were finally released in 1973. There was an emotional reunion taking place at the Richard Nixon Library. Hundreds of former POWs from the Vietnam War gathering to commemorate a star-studded dinner that took place at the White House 40 years ago. The reunion happened today in Southern California at the Richard Nixon Presidential Library. Now, this was a very special day with a lot of historical context, as you'll see in a moment. These POWs came from all over the country to be here today, and many more people came out to salute them. It was a hero's welcome that these heroes were worthy of. When I saw the people holding a flag, I said, I still get goosebumps. Look at them. <laughs> Thank you.
they've been slowed by time, their numbers dwindling. Though many reuniting at the Nixon Library were propelled to rewarding lives by their rescue 40 years ago, they've never lost their bond with each other. Or with the president, as controversial as the war itself, who negotiated their freedom on the way to ending their war. Following seven years in a Hanoi prison, Chuck Boyd went on to earn four stars as an Air Force general. Mr. Nixon's this week, he and nearly a third of the 591 POWs granted the unexpected gift of freedom four decades ago were invited to remember how it tasted, how their loved ones rejoiced at their release, how unbelievable it felt to leave their prison hellhole alive. I'm really a sucker for these. Uh, last night I was at a salute to freedom on the Intrepid. T check this out, this emotional celebration of service. We can't thank them enough. It's at the Richard Nixon Presidential Library this Memorial Day weekend. There are hundreds of former POWs from Vietnam all gathering to commemorate a star-studded dinner party thrown at the White House 40 years ago. I think it's time. William Lajeunesse, live at the Nixon Library in Yorba Linda, California. So glad to hear this is happening, William. You know, Jamie, that was the largest dinner ever held at the White House, and uh, we're looking at some 1,300 people. Well, in just a few hours, about 200 of those POWs who were starved, beaten, and bound in North Vietnam will commemorate that dinner held in their honor by then-President Nixon, May 24th, 1973. McDaniel, along with two other Vietnam POWs, took a sneak peek at the venue for tonight's dinner that's designed to replicate the dinner back in 1973. Each table, plate, and glass brought back memories of that reunion dinner hosted by President Nixon. He came over to the table and we stood up and he put his arms around me and my sister and said, ah, the first sister again. That was very meaningful. I'm looking forward to it. My wife is looking forward to it, and we got our camera. <laughs> I was in table D. I was over here somewhere. It was entertainer Sammy Davis Jr.'s idea to have a big celebration. He said to the president, he said, you know, you have a big party for them. He said, wouldn't it be nice if you could have all the POWs at a White House dinner? With nearly 1,300 guests, it was the largest ever White House dinner. A huge tent covered the South Lawn. Bob Hope was master of ceremonies. John Wayne spoke. The heroes also were given unusual access inside the house. One of us said, what do you suppose is in this door? I don't know. And I opened the door, and it was President Nixon's study. And he was sitting behind the desk. And we walked in, and oh, my God. And he said, you know, it's okay, boys. That's all right. I'll be down there in a minute. You just go right ahead. And, you know, we are just shake oh my god we walked in on the president you know for many the highlight of the evening was the singing of god bless america led by the man who wrote the tune irving berlin my wife talks about that this this day she was standing there just tears falling out of her face god bless america land that i love stand beside her decorated veterans, Vietnam POWs, many of them former pilots, reunited tonight wearing the same uniforms they wore the evening of May 24th, 1973. Described as a magical night, a special dinner and celebration at the South Lawn of the White House with President Richard Nixon and his wife Pat. It rained all day and it was wet everywhere, but uh, it was also not a dry eye in the house. One of the great occasions of the Nixon presidency. Back then and today, these heroes are honored for their courage and endurance, surviving years of captivity and torture by the enemy. I remember their honor, their courage, their commitment to our country. On this night, Trisha Nixon Cox did the honors. You never lost faith in America, and my father never lost faith in you. In prison, they wrote down songs about America on toilet paper. They hid it from the Vietnamese. And 40 years ago, they sang one of them, written in prison. It is called the POW Prayer, about honor and freedom, freedom and home.
At the dinner 40 years ago, the POW choir sang a hymn one soldier wrote during captivity. Four decades older and unrehearsed, choir members sang the words they learned long ago when they were far from hope and far from home. America, and oh God, to thee we lift our prayer and sing. Oh God, to thee And the nation salutes them back.